okay students let us discuss one more question that is long answer type question structure of heart structure of human heart so what is the use of heart heart is a central pumping organ which is useful for collecting the blood and pumping the blood so for the collection and pumping purpose it is very important so that's why it is called a central pumping organ okay so where it is located externally how it is internally how it is that all comes under the structure so let us discuss its location so suppose if you see the lungs are there in the thoracic cavity between the lungs you can see some space is there this space is called mediastinum cavity what is this place mediastinum cavity so in the mediastinum cavity okay slightly left side we can see the heart so you can see here this is all about heart in the mediastinum cavity okay so this heart slightly conical shape if you see slightly zoom it if you see the heart slightly left side the pointed apex you can see that is slightly left side so the upper chambers you can say these are the atria so these are in the anterior side these are called ventricles so these ventricles are in the posterior side the pointed apex is slightly towards left side so like that the structure is there and uh, we can see the outlines okay so what are the lines are there we can see now this is the line fibrous pericardium what is this fibrous pericardium heart is surrounded by fibrous pericardium and inner layer is serous pericardium so like that there are two pericardium layers are there one is outer fibrous layer and inner serous layer if you see the clear structure of these particular layers how they are arranged we will see now generally here so if you see the heart the outer layers we are discussing now what is the outer layer this is fibrous pericardium what about these two layers serous pericardium serous pericardium serous pericardium so two times i wrote means fibrous pericardium is a single layer serous pericardium is a double layer so like that this outer one is we can see somatic layer or somatic pericardium and the inner one is called visceral pericardium so between the somatic and visceral parietal layers we can see space so this space is called pericardial space this pericardial space is filled with pericardial fluid so this pericardial fluid prevents the heart and protects from the frictions so that's why it works as a lubricant so anyway here it is all about the particular layers and the serous pericardial layer whatever you are observing you can see it is almost in contact with heart yes it is almost in touch with heart so if you see the heart layers heart layers are three one is the wall of heart made with three layers this is epicardium and this is myocardium and this is endo cardium so like that previously we discussed about envelopes in red color you are observing here but in the black sketch you can see the three wall this is heart wall okay made with how many layers three epicardium myocardium endocardium epicardium is almost contact with outer that is visceral pericardium so the heart wall is made with epicardium myocardium endocardium epicardium is almost contact with okay visceral serous peritoneum and myocardium is with cardiac muscles that are very important in the heart beat especially in the heart contraction and relaxation that is called systole and diastole at the heart movements especially myocardium is very important because it consists of cardiac muscles 
and uh, the inner layer you can see this is the inner lining or inner layer that is made with uh, epithelial cells we can also called uh, endothelium this endothelium which is present in the endocardium you can see it's uh, it's not only the inner layer of the heart and also it lines the valves it lines the valves of the heart bicuspid and tricuspid valves are also lined by this endocardium and also it is uh, going to give lining to the large blood vessels so here in the large blood vessels are also lined by this endocardium so like that heart wall is made with uh, three layers now let us see how it looks from outside that is all about heart how it looks from outside we will see now generally this heart you can see these are the two atrias this is called right atria and this is a left atria and uh, this is all about okay right ventricle and this is left ventricle so like that four chambered heart you are observing but from outside we can see only this type of partition we can see clearly why because atrias and ventricles are clearly separated atrias and ventricles are clearly separated by in okay atrio ventricular septum what is this atrio what is this ventricular middle line is called septum av septum we can also called coronary sulcus what is another name coronary sulcus so like that a clear cut partition we can observe between atrias and ventricle and here you can see okay a fatty depositions we can observe in the okay ventricles on the ventricles you can see the fatty depositions are there okay so in this fatty depositions you can see the coronary arteries and coronary veins because coronary arteries and coronary veins coronary arteries and coronary veins so what they are going to do they will supply blood to heart so that's why coronary artery and coronary veins are generally deposited in the wall of ventricles in the side by protection given by fat so like that this type of arrangement we can see from outside and one more thing generally you can see this type of overlap see it is overlapped like this so this type of curve whatever the overlap you are observing this is called auricular appendix auricular appendix auricular appendix is a extension of atria on the ventricles slightly bulged parts of the ventricle atrias on the ventricles we can see it is a auricular appendix so now we will discuss about the internal structure up to now we discussed only outside how it is let us go into the heart if you go into the heart first we will see the atrias you see friends in this atrias two atria right atria left atria separated by a very thin membrane what is this inter and in between inter atrial septum inter atrial septum the membrane which is present between two atrias so in embryonic condition in embryonic condition there is a hole so that's why this particular hole we can called foramen foramen ovalis so this foramen ovalis is a hole which is present in embryonic condition but when lungs becomes functional when lungs becomes functional at that time this foramen oval is closed so now this foramen oval is closed and a small patch like this is now named as fossa ovalis in some children it may not close sometimes it may not close so that are called the type of condition is called patent foramen ovalis patent foramen ovalis condition we can see but most of the times it is closed that's why now it is named as fossa ovalis okay 
Now coming to the discussion of right atria. First we will discuss about this particular room. Then we will discuss about another room. Which room now we are going to discuss? We are now in the discussion of right atria. So if you see the size, which one is large? Right atria is large. Okay, so among the two atrias, right atria is large and it is a main receiving chamber. So from where it will receive the blood? You can see this is a single precaval vein. What is this? Precaval vein. Through the precaval vein, blood is collected from the anterior part of the heart, means from the head, neck, shoulders. So like that it collects blood. Okay, you see another pipeline is there, you see from the back side it is coming and it will open here. You see from the back side of the heart, from the back side of the heart you are seeing this connection. This is called post caval vein, post caval vein. This pre caval vein another name is there, superior vena cava. This post caval vein is, has another name that is inferior vena cava. Means from the bottom of the heart okay and also from the in, okay lower parts of the body from the lower part of the body below the heart we can see the collection from this post caval vein so like that pre caval vein collects heart blood to the heart from the anterior part and it is collecting blood from the posterior part okay so where it is there here it is opening near to this particular there is a valve called Eustachian valve. Eustachian valve is present. This Eustachian valve becomes vestigial. Why? Because in the embryonic condition, once the hole is open, at that time it is used to pump the blood towards right atria to left atria. But now it is closed, no? So that's why this is non functional. Okay, that is about eustachian wall. Where it is located? It is located near the opening of post caval vein. Okay, coming to the next, from heart to heart, who is collecting? That is important. This is from below the heart. This is from above the heart. What about this particular? Yes, this is called coronary sinus. Coronary sinus. This coronary sinus can able to collect from the blood from the myocardium of heart from where myocardium of heart through four cardiac veins it collects anyway here you can write coronary sinus is a small blood vessel which collects blood from myocardium of heart and opens where it is it is very near to precaval right so here there is a valve called okay thebaceous valve what is this thebaceous valve where is thebaceous valve thebaceous valve is present where coronary sinus is opening near to the precaval vein so this is one of the important point and near to the eustachian valve near to the eustachian valve you can see the red color dot Okay, slightly anterior to the right atria, above, okay, above the eustachian wall, this is very, very, very special structure called SA node. What is this? Cyanoauricular node, specially made with cardiac muscles. It is a unique and special nodal tissue which can able to produce heartbeat. So that's why this is the junction from where, this is the place from where heart beats generates. So that's why this particular part is called pacemaker. Pacemaker means who okay, the part which starts a heartbeat that is called pacemaker. It is nothing but yes a node. Okay. Now you can see this another small node you can observe in another point that is almost okay in the right corner of okay left corner of the right atria left corner of the right atria left corner of the right atria near to the interventricular septum you can see this junction this is all about a v node what is this a v node a v node is not a pacemaker 
whatever the signals are coming from this way the signals are received so that's why i am writing it is a relay point so generation point is sa node relay point is av node so like that the two nodes are present in that right atria this is all about the particular right atrial chamber coming to the left atria you can see in this chamber there is a simple point we can able to see that simple point is nothing but you can see these are the pulmonary veins what are these pulmonary veins so there are two pairs of pulmonary veins are there two pairs of pulmonary veins are there two are coming from left side two are coming from right side lung left side lung right side lung two two total four they are opening independently or together into the left atria but here in this particular part there is no wall so directly the blood is pumped or directly the blood is poured into left atria through the pulmonary veins this is only the point of left atria now friends let us discuss about ventricles okay just before going to ventricles you can see there is a two holes okay this is atria this is ventricle so which type of connection is there between them on the inter atrio ventricular septum you can see two holes yes these are called okay atrio ventricular apertures okay so these atrio ventricular apertures are called openings from these blood enters into ventricle from this pores you can see the two apertures from atria to ventricle the blood is coming it is guarded by three valves that is especially right side you can see the left side you can see guarded by two this is all named about tricuspid what is this tricuspid valve tell me where is tricuspid valve tricuspid valve is present between the right atria and right ventricle in the aperture you can see next in between left atria and left ventricle the aperture is guarded by especially bicuspid valve what is this bicuspid valve we can also call this valve is a mitral valve so like that the connection is there between atria and ventricle okay students just now we discussed about atria now let us discuss particularly about the ventricles so so this is very easy in the point of learning so that's why we are separate separately learning about atria and ventricles for your convenience especially for reading purpose this type of study is very important see here the ventricles you can see okay you know these are the structures okay posterior to the heart you can see interventricular septum what is this line interventricular septum so this interventricular septum separates two ventricles you see this wall it is very bulged okay so what about this wall now it is very thin so you can observe the particular thing this is all about this particular area this is left ventricle this is right ventricle the wall of left ventricle is very large wall of left ventricle is very thick and wall of this particular is right ventricle is very thin left ventricle wall is very thick why because it can able to pump the blood to many body parts but from here blood is pumped only to the lungs so that's why here it is not that much muscular okay this is about wall of ventricles and inside the wall you can see inside the wall there are muscular ridges what are these muscular ridges this side and this side you can see muscular ridges these muscular ridges are called columnae carnae what are these columnae carnae are the muscular ridges in the inside of the 
heart wall and uh, you can see another thing conical shaped muscles are there what are this conical shaped musculature you can see okay which are attached to columnae carne this conical shaped extensions are called papillary muscles what are this papillary muscles so this is wall okay internally wall has columnae carne columnae carne are attached with the papillary muscles okay what this papillary muscle is going to do you know here it is bicuspid wall is there just now we discussed here it is tricuspid wall is there bicuspid wall and tricuspid walls are there so from the papillary muscles to you see this diagram carefully papillary muscles are connected with the cord like tendons and they are attached with the valves so like that these cords are called what are these particularly cordae tendine cordae tendine these cordae tendine are okay strings heart strings that are very important for the opening and closing of valves here see the two valves are there here see three valves are there their movement is controlled by these strings okay suppose if the strings are not there what happens this bicuspid and tricuspid valves will go up into the atria so that's why the movement is controlled valves movement is controlled by the cordae tendine so this is one of the important internal attachment in the contraction okay now let us discuss the blood vessels related to ventricles so suppose you see the right ventricle and uh, here it is okay right ventricles left corner you can see the blood vessel this is all about the pulmonary vein this is pulmonary artery what is this pulmonary artery this is pulmonary artery what about uh, left ventricle so you see left ventricles right corner left ventricles right corner so here in this particular region you can see another big blood vessel what is this big blood vessel this is systemic aorta systemic aorta so this is so there are only two major arteries are present that are pulmonary artery and systemic aorta so these are very important why because pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood from right ventricle to lungs for oxygenation purpose what about uh, this particular chamber here full of oxygenated blood is there so that's why from the left ventricle oxygenated blood is pumped to all the body parts uh, especially with the help of systemic aorta and one more important thing you can see systemic aorta is coming and taking the left turn yes it is turned towards left so this is very important note that we have especially mammals have left systemic aorta that is okay future it is going to become okay it is going to become dorsal aorta so anyway these two are internally there is a connection so between between the pulmonary artery and systemic aorta there is a ligamentous connection attachment is there this is called okay ductus arteriosus in the previous animals that is we can see in the lower invertebrates that is called ductus arteriosus but here we can see this is ductus ligamentum or ligamentum arteriosus what is this ligamentum arteriosus ligamentum arteriosus so here the pulmonary artery and systemic aorta both are a small connection is there between them that is called ligamentum arteriosum ligamentum arteriosum it is uh, in the lower vertebrates it is nothing but ductus botali which is collecting connecting the pulmonary arch and uh, systemic arch 
so like that pulmonary blood vessel and sy systemic blood vessels are connected as a ductus uh, botali in uh, amphibians but in mammals it is uh, reduced and become vestigial and as a closed uh, okay ligament that is nothing but ductus arteriosum and uh, coming to the entrances if you see this is semi lunar valves are present you see this okay in the base of iota in the base of iota you can see one two three so you can see the three structures you are observing like this the openings are there these are called semi lunar valves how many are there three semi lunar valves are there so these semi lunar valves close and open according to the functioning of heart so these are very important which can okay prevent the flow of blood from iotas and arteries to ventricles so like that once the blood is pumped up again it never comes back why because the semi lunar valves are going to stop so like that in zoomed view you can see here particularly about this particular semi lunar valves you can call it as a pulmonary valve in pulmonary artery systemic valve in the systemic aorta so like that this is all about the structure of heart okay students in this long answer question compulsory diagram is essential so that's why you see this diagram it is very clearly here you are observing at least some labelings like a uh, few labelings here you are observing like uh, 10 like that you can see now this is all about the left turn which is taking this is systemic aorta and you can see this uh, arch that is called pulmonary arch and the systemic arch and pulmonary aorta that is pulmonary arch and uh, systemic aorta are connected by ligamentum arteriosum okay right atria receives uh, okay pre from blood from pre caval vein and also from pro post caval vein you see post caval vein you see pre caval vein and here left atria you can see pulmonary veins are coming pulmonary veins pours oxygenated blood into the left atria and here you can see coronary arteries and coronary veins in the fat deposits and this is all about ventricle so like that you have to draw a clear diagram neat diagram then you will get good marks